Okay, so we are going to predict solubility using the solubility rules, which can be found in table 8.4 in your textbook. And we are also going to write molecular total ionic and net ionic equations. Okay, so here is an example of a problem. It says predict the products and tell their solubility for the reaction of sodium hydroxide and magnesium chloride. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to write the reaction from the sentence. So predict the products. So that means these are the reactants, sodium hydroxide and magnesium chloride. We're gonna predict the products and write their solubility. And we're gonna do that by looking at the solubility rules. So these are both aqueous, um, compounds and you wouldn't know that unless you looked at the solubility rules. So what the solubility rules are is it's a chart in your textbook. It's in um, table 8.4 in your text and what it does is it goes through different combinations of ions that are soluble or insoluble. So you would go to that chart and look at it and say is sodium hydroxide soluble or not and it would tell you yes or no. And then magnesium soluble or not and it would tell you yes, both of these are soluble. So you also need to be able to um, write compounds from the names. So remember sodium, if you're looking at a periodic table, it's in group one, so that means it's plus one. Hydroxide is one of the polyatomic ions that you're responsible for knowing. Magnesium is in group two, so it's Mg2 plus. And then chlorine, the chloride ion, is in group seven. It's all the way over by the noble gases. It's Cl minus. So we're gonna use these ions to write these ionic compounds. So these over here are gonna be the reactants. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna predict the products. And their solubility. And we already said that these were aqueous. So I'm gonna write these out. So sodium hydroxide, NaOH, it's aqueous because the solubility rules chart on table eight, in table 8.4 tells us there's no way for you to look at sodium hydroxide and know if it's aqueous or solid. You have to look at that chart. You will have that chart available to you on exams. You will have it in front of you when you're doing your homework or any problems that we're doing together. And then magnesium chloride. So remember ionic compounds are charge neutral, which means if magnesium is plus two, then I must need two chlorines to balance that out. So the way that I write that is MgCl2. Also looked it up, it's aqueous. So now from this, we're gonna predict the products. So <clears throat> remember, we need to um, swap partners. This is a double displacement reaction and we're gonna switch partners. So remember double displacement reactions. This is back from um, the beginning of general chemistry. So remember, I'm just gonna write it up here in this little part up here. So remember double displacement reactions look like this, A, B, plus C, D, and then remember the things in the front are positive and the end are negative, so it's gonna become A, D, plus C, B. 
So the reason for this is because ionic compounds are always the cation, the positively charged ion is first, the negatively charged anion is second. So we're gonna rewrite this in that format. So A, B plus C, D becomes A, D plus C, B. So it's gonna be sodium and chloride NaCl, and then it's gonna be magnesium and hydroxide. Remember the magnesium has to come first because it's positive and the hydroxide is negative. So don't um, be tempted to write OHMG because that would be incorrect. The positive charged ion comes first, the negative charged ion comes second. I have two plus and one minus, so I'm gonna need two hydroxides. So remember how you write that, MgOH. Two. You have to have parentheses around here to mean that there are two of the hydroxides. If there's no parentheses, that just means two hydrogens. So now I'm gonna look it up in the solubility rules. I see that sodium chloride is soluble. I also see that magnesium hydroxide is insoluble. So I'm just gonna write here, soluble. That means aqueous. Here in the solubility rules, it says it is insoluble. Insoluble means solid. Soluble does not mean S. Soluble means aqueous. Insoluble means S, solid. So we've done this first part of the problem. Predict the solubility and the products. Predict the solubility and the products of this reaction. We did that. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the rest of this. Write the molecular equation the total ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. One thing to pay attention to here, we're not done with this problem, but I just wanna make sure that everybody understands. This problem is unbalanced. We would never leave a problem like this, but we're just showing all the steps of solving it. So let's look at the next part. That was writing the products and predicting their solubility. So now let's write what's called the molecular equation. So the molecular equation is just this, reactants and products balanced and with all the correct phases. This is not balanced because I have two chlorines on this side, only one chlorine on this side. I have two hydroxides on this side and only one hydroxide on this side. So I'm gonna end up needing a two here and a two here to balance it. And I'm gonna write all of that down again right here. So that's the molecular equation. So things that make this as a molecular equation is that it has to be balanced and it has to have correct phases. Okay, so that's this molecular equation. So now let's move on to total ionic equation. So the total ionic equation is where everything that is aqueous is going to break into ions. Things that are solid will stay together. And this is because what we talked about with water, things that are aqueous are gonna break apart into ions because of the ion-dipole interaction with water that's polar. If it's solid, it's not gonna break apart into ions. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna write every single ion. So I'm gonna write two sodium ions, two hydroxide ions, one magnesium ion, two chloride ions, and so on. So I'm gonna do this for the whole equation.
So this stayed together, this magnesium hydroxide, because it's a solid. Everything else broke apart. So that's the total ionic equation. Everything into its ions. The last thing <clears throat> is what's called the net ionic equation. The net ionic equation is where you go through and cancel anything that is exactly the same on both sides of the arrow. So that's what I'm gonna do. So here I have two sodiums, two sodiums. Those are not gonna be in the net ionic equation. Two hydroxides, I don't have two hydroxide ions over here, so I can't cancel those. Two magnesiums, I don't have two magnesium ions over here because it's in the solid compound. Two chlorides, two chlorides. So all of those are canceled. So now the net ionic equation is what's left. So what I have left, two, aqueous hydroxide ions plus one magnesium ion produces one magnesium hydroxide. And that's the net ionic equation of this. So you'll be asked to do all of this in examples on your homework and on exams where you're given reactants, you will predict the products, from that, you'll write molecular equations, total ionic equations, and net ionic equations.